Very excited today to stand before you to say thank you for attending this event. This is our annual convention. This is when we gather folks from the industry in one space from across Alaska, which does not happen very often. So thank you very much. Uh, I want to take a moment just to talk about today's theme. So each of our, our days of the convention this year correspond with a different theme, and today's is advocacy. So on that note, I'm very excited to present our first topic of the morning. So I've asked the, the regional FAA as well as national FAA to stand in today to talk with you, and they have done so eagerly. So we are very excited to welcome them. They have given us time later today during this first presentation for questions. So you'll have about 15, 15 minutes or so. I invite you to ask those questions. They are open. They are eager to have those conversations with you. Please do. So as they present this morning, please think through what those might be, and we will have that discussion. So without further ado, I have a couple of announcements before we get started with that. So bear with me a second here. So the first thing, we have breakout sessions today. As you walk out this door, you're going to take a right towards where the food was yesterday afternoon. You'll see opposite that is the Turnigan room. There's a sign on the side. That's our breakout room. So when you're in there, the USDOT is talking about O&D reporting, T100, 298C. That starts this morning at, at about 9.10. So that's a specific uh, topic. If you're an airline that needs to deal with those issues, I recommend that you attend that. We have a weather infrastructure panel later in that room, as well as an aviation software panel. Uh, point of awareness, that software panel has moved from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. So if you plan on attending that, I would suggest that change. And then uh, this evening is very exciting. We have our banquet and our auctions. If you haven't had a second, if you haven't been to the restrooms yet and seen our signs, there is a silent auction. Uh, we encourage you to participate in that. That is how we make a great deal of our revenue, which supports our ability to advocate on behalf of our airlines. So please do that. And then this evening we have an auctioneer who will join us. He is a, a excuse me, gregarious individual. You will like working with him. He's a lot of fun. So I invite you to come back for our banquet tonight at six and we will have that uh, evening of dancing, auctions and good food. Okay, without any further ado, I'm going to introduce Mr. Mike O'Hare, the regional administrator of the FAA, the Alaska region. So a round of applause, please. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Get some coffee. Good morning, everybody. Good to see you. Thanks. Appreciate that. I know it's Wednesday. I hear we're uh, having a great, uh, great conference here. Uh, can I just uh, get a show of hands? Who hears from the FAA? That's what I'm talking about. So you call, we haul. All right. I just want to say that uh, we uh, we appreciate your partnership and we appreciate being invited to uh, to the Airmen's Conference and and, uh, and the Association Conference. Thanks, Will. Dan, thank you very much for your leadership and your partnership. Uh, for those that you don't know me, um, I'm Mike O'Hare. I'm the Regional Administrator for the FAA for the Alaskan Region. Uh, I'm a 30-year Alaskan. I was hired September 11th. September 11th, yep, a uh, year and a half ago. Uh, my my background is not in aviation. It's in Homeland Security and emergency management. I wasn't hired because FAA is a disaster in Alaska. I was hired because of my ability uh, to put together teams and partnerships, maintain, sustain collaborations. And uh, my 30 years in Alaska, that's what we do up here anyway. Uh, and it's truly an honor to, in the year and a half, uh, um, I'm honored to uh, be part of the partnerships and collaborations that we've put forth. And I appreciate you all, my partners, my friends. If you don't get to know me, uh, if you don't know me, you get to know me. Um, I'm a firm believer in frank and meaningful discussions, as you can tell from our uh, industry council partners. I, it's, a, it's, it's something that we have to do. I'll be frank, you be meaningful. You be frank, I'll be meaningful. And we'll talk about things that are important and we'll talk about issues and we'll talk about frustrations. So if we can't get that uh, honest partnership discourse, then we can't make improvements in Alaska. Um, so that, that's a little bit about me. I raised my wife, my beautiful wife. Honey, you listening? Uh, honey, my beautiful wife, Valerie, and I raised two beautiful girls here in Alaska. They're all back east, of course, as it goes, but hopefully they're gonna find their way back to Alaska because it's, it's home for us. Um, so we're really honored to be here. Um, <coughs> excuse me. 
We're going to start with a message from the FAA Administrator, uh, Mike Whitaker. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, he's my big, big boss. Uh, I will tell you that uh, Mike Whitaker uh, took his role as the FAA in October 2023. Uh, he's the uh, uh, he was the de oh, Tony. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Uh, he was the deputy administrator from 2013 to 2016. He has traveled to Alaska, uh, and if uh, Senator Sullivan Murkowski and and uh, Congresswoman Peltola have anything to do about it, he'll be back pretty quick. Um, Jackie and I had the opportunity to brief him uh, on some of the the things that we're doing up here in Alaska and the important things that we're doing in Alaska last week in D.C. and uh, who saw the. House T&I uh, um, testimony yesterday. Thanks, Troy. Yeah, it was all about Alaska FAA safety initiative with uh, Congresswoman Peltola. It was all about uh, uh, advanced technologies to support uh, the furtherance of aviation safety and support aviation safety here in Alaska, AWOS, VWAS, uh, NAV AIDS, uh, and of course the collaboration. So. Uh, in our briefing to Mike Whitaker, we talked about we as Alaskans, we speak as one voice, one partnership, because that's what it's all about. So um, uh, Mike Whitaker, he, he's, he's got this very interesting mantra, uh, aviate, navigate, and communicate, which Jackie Holzman, my deputy, will go over in a little bit. Um, but uh, Mike's leadership helps us set our priorities uh, for, AV, for uh, the FAA for, uh, for Alaska. So. Let's roll Mike Whitaker's video. Mike, good morning. Hi, it's recording. I'm FAA Administrator Mike Whitaker. I'm sorry I can't be with you for the Alaska Air Carriers Association Convention this week. At the FAA, we like to say that safety is our North Star. This star's prominent placement on your state flag reminds us that we must be true to the North Star of aviation safety. I appreciate your focus on safety during your convention. Aviation is the backbone of transportation in Alaska, with 82% of the communities being accessible only by air. Sadly, too many lives have been lost due to Alaska's unforgiving environment. That's why the FAA has made it a priority to work with industry and other stakeholders through our Alaska Aviation Safety Initiative to drive significant safety improvements. Since 2018, the number of fatalities in both Part 91 and Part 135 Alaska operations has gone down by 25%, and we want these numbers to keep going down. We know your association, along with other community partners, has played a vital role in the downward trend. Contributing to these gains with strong investments to Alaska's aviation infrastructure made through the initiative. We now have 50 GPS low altitude air traffic service routes published for use and 60 mountain passes listed on Alaska aviation charts. Last year, we installed five additional ADSB ground-based transceivers. And this year, we intend to have seven new automated weather observing systems, and we're working on solutions for the eighth site. Another significant improvement to safety in Alaska is the recent changes made to the common traffic advisory frequencies. Designating one frequency that is associated with all non-towered airports within the geographical boundaries of these CTAF areas will help pilots better communicate with each other, make the skies of Alaska safer, and save lives. We are making great progress. Moving forward, we will focus on continuing to enhance weather reporting capabilities via ground-based systems such as AWOS and VWAS, improving navigation charting, expanding ADSB service, and enhancing the existing safety programs while aggressively working to create opportunities to work jointly with other stakeholders. Thanks to your active participation in these efforts, Alaska has made tremendous strides in aviation safety, and we want to go further. In Alaska, there's no magic bullet, but through our combined efforts, I'm confident we will continue on course, guided by the North Star of safety. Thank you for your support for this important work, and best wishes for a successful convention. All right, thanks, Mike. Appreciate it. So just hit this big button thing. I love technology. It's good. Well, as you can, you heard, thanks. Appreciate that. So, so as you heard from Mike Whitaker, and this was also his testimony yesterday, a house TNI, uh, he mentioned some of our um, our, our, our major initiative, our FAA 
Alaska Aviation Safety Initiative, also known as FASI, because we like to put cool acronyms on everything. Um, uh, he, he stressed that. He also stressed the advancement of technologies to support aviation safety in Alaska. NAV aids weather, 